Currently through this area, through the central tableland zone, we've been having some pretty dry conditions uh, facing some challenging issues for some of the livestock producers in particular. Uh, one of the big things that I've been working with with the uh, beef producers is looking at early weaning, particularly those people that have had uh, spring calves, looking at um, weaning your calves. How early can you wean has been one of the big questions we've sort of been getting, looking at uh, the age of those calves, how, how early. Um, and so the advice I've been giving people is really they need to make an assessment of their own situation. Assess the cow's fat score. If you've got cows starting to drop down into that bottom end of fat score too, really that's a trigger to say it's time to wean and wean those calves. Um, it doesn't matter how often I've done the numbers and the sums for people, but uh, realistically it's always easier and better to feed the cow and the calf separately than trying to feed a cow uh, with a, with a calf on it and trying to feed that calf through the cow. Just to keep a lactating cow uh, in, in, and to maintain her, she requires 60% more than a dry cow. And the quality of feed that the dry cow requires versus a lactating cow is substantially different. So really one of the big things has been telling people, look at that early weaning, pull those calves off, um, and look at how you manage those weaners. Split them up, get like with like, don't go with a, uh, you know, a whole lot into one paddock uh, or into a yard situation, allow enough trough space um, and, and sort of if they're very light calves under 120 kilos they're going to require a little bit more management, a little bit more health uh, issues that can pop up so need to be aware of those but also looking at um, managing those heavier ones above 120 kilos, you know, things are a bit easier, we can get by with sort of a, bit lesser quality feed but still needs fairly good quality feed. Once they're up over 180, 200 kilos it's pretty easy we can manage them and there's no real benefit for those calves being on those cows so that's really been one of the big big things I've been pushing with the beef producers. Look at that early weaning, looking at those cows, look at the fat scores of the cows and manage those cows accordingly. Uh, one thing also that I've been really pushing is getting good feed tests. Don't just assume that the food quality of feed that you're getting is the same uh, and is normal. Try to get some good feed samples, send it away, get a feed test. If you get the feed test comes back, it tells us what the quality of the feed is, it makes it so much easier to work out how you're actually going to manage those animals. The quantities and quality that of that feed is going to vary tremendously so that so too will their volumes and the amounts that you have to feed so be aware of those things get a feed test don't guess um, uh, some of the other bits and pieces i've been working on with producers are uh, looking at sort of how to feed different scenarios you know if you bring them into a confinement feeding situation what is actually required trough lengths and things like that and it really is one of the big tips i have get good get good advice on what you actually do need and don't scrimp, don't, don't sort of cut down on the amount of troughs or the amount of uh, feeders that you need. It really is vital that you follow the rules and you have too much than not enough feed space because that really can cause some problems. Mm -hmm.